As we all know, the utilization of aura is one of the most prominent techniques for hunters and huntresses in the world of Remnant, especially since every living being with a soul possesses an aura. Hunters and huntresses have used or learned to use aura for all different purposes in terms of their semblance, in terms of offense and defense, the most prominent of which actually being, other than their semblance, being defense or the formation of the aura cloak. In the schools it's used to gauge um, when fighting, when a person is no longer able to fight because once their aura cloak is down they're actually able to take physical damage. The aura cloak, its purpose is to prevent physical damage to the user, which makes sense. But that's, in my opinion, not... it's, it's not an all-encompassing shield. It won't protect against everything. It stated that an aura cloak, although it prevents the physical damage, the user can still feel the sensations of pain and heat. That would also go, that would also stand to reason that they would also feel the loss of heat. So that got me thinking about a couple of ways that you could get past a person's aura cloak that you could actually win the fight or potentially kill a person without even deactivating their aura cloak. Now, even back in the last season, we saw when Raven was frozen and when Cinder was frozen that, um, well, for they were frozen. So if a person is frozen, their internal body temperature will drop to a point where hypothermia will set in and eventually death. That is a way that people will die. And if a person is frozen entirely, if it stays that way for a long time, which if Cinder didn't break free of the ice as, as she was falling, then with enough time, it, she will freeze and die. Her internal organs will shut down and she will die. Now, she could have broken free, but that's, that's a discussion that I've already uh, put in a previous video on who will be the next Fall Maiden. But those are two ways that a person could be killed, even with their aura cloak at full power. If they're frozen and their internal organs will shut down, or if they're overheated, because heat stroke's a thing, fevers are a thing, and people will die that way. Another way could also be by overloading a person's pain sensation. If there's a way that um, a person in a fight could attack someone and hit up spot that just is so unbelievably painful that it makes the person pass out, then that person's now helpless and not able to do anything. Now it is stated that uh, highly trained people can subconsciously generate an aura cloak. Now, I don't know if this would be only when they're awake, or if they're subconsciously generating it while they're asleep as well. Because if they're knocked out, then, and they're still generating their cloak, they'd still be at the mercy of the person because they could just literally just wail on them until the aura cloak is uh, shattered and then can kill them that way. But if it's not someone who's been trained in subconsciously uh, producing an aura cloak, then once it's deactivated, or once they're unconscious, then they're just at the mercy of whoever knocked them out. But what actually got me started on this thought process, I was re-watching the Vital Festival. Especially, or more in particular, the fight that Nora had where her semblance was first revealed. Where she was hit with that shock baton that charged up her semblance and uh, her semblance was stated that if she's hit with electricity, it will go straight to her muscles and increase her power. Now, she was still in the fight, so obviously her aura was still active because in the Vital Tournament, if your aura drops to a certain level, not de not depleted completely, it'll still be there, but drops to a certain level, you're knocked out. So her aura was still active, yet the electricity went through her aura and into her body. And we also saw that with Neptune as well. When he won his fight, he used the electricity to electrocute his opponents. Now, whether they were just knocked out or whether their aura was depleted, Though I'm using Nora as a reference that the electricity passed through the aura into her body and that was just the way it was. The electricity just passed through because electricity isn't physical to the same sense that a sword attack would be. It's the transfer of energy between molecules. So that got me thinking. Aura is not impenetrable. There are ways to get around it. Electricity would be a way, temperature would be a way, and the sensation of pain. But then, if 
of course, people like, for example, Crow, like he's still, he's always generating an aura and everything, but you can still eat and drink. So there's obviously ways to pass through the aura or get physical objects through the aura. Granted, that would probably be the conscious effort of, you know, I'm going to eat something and it's going to pass through. But people, when they're fighting, they have to breathe. So the air molecules are still getting through the aura. So the aura is not a just solid shield across the body. It's actually... Uh, there's holes throughout it, or it's a porous um, substance. It's not an actual physical... Well, it is a physical shield when they're taking damage, but air and gases can still pass through it. So if someone were able to utilize any toxic gas, that would get through. Toxic gas is a way that... Or smoke from a fire, or any other sort of gaseous... Uh, attack would be able to actually get through the aura cloak and deal damage to people and kill people. If I'm sure if radiation was a thing in Ruby as well, since everything runs off dust, I don't think radiation will be a thing, but radiation would probably get through the aura cloak and kill a person as well. And that also got me thinking, what if a person was submerged underwater? If a person who has their full aura cloak up is submerged underwater, would the cloak prevent the water from getting them and they would just suffocate to death? Or would the water actually get through and have them drown? Now, if that's the case and water can get through and liquids can get through, then there's also the terms of poison. Like, I know when Tyrion poisoned Crow, uh, Crow's aura was deactivated for him to actually take that physical cut, so that's different than that way. But if someone were just to, like, spray a toxin at a person... Again, there's the gas method, as the gas would definitely get through, but even a liquid poison, that's just a contact on the skin. Like if Tyrion, for example, could um, flick his tail and flick out poison in a liquid form, would that actually like get on someone's skin and burn them, for example? And if that's the case, and liquids can get through aura, then that's a pretty big flaw in the aura cloak, in, in my opinion. I have a feeling that they'd want to have a, the aura cloak protect against liquids from things like poison and stuff being splashed on them, but then that also brings me back to the point of if they're submerged underwater, they would probably drown, even if their aura cloak is active. So that's something I'm curious about and we don't actually have any answers to. But that also brings me to the next point. Pressure. If someone is crushed under a large rock or submerged far enough underwater that the air pressure would um, just be so much that it would start collapsing their lungs. Or if they were shot high enough into the air that the air pressure changed so rapidly that their lungs just exploded. Or an aura cloak can't do anything to protect against that because the overall pressure would still be felt inside the body and it would crush their lungs and destroy them. The same, actually, back to the gas point, if they're put into a vacuum, that all the air was sucked out of a certain space that would get them as well. And I'm sure there's other things that I'm missing, but just those main points, there are a lot of things that could actually get past the Aura Cloak in this series. Electricity and temperature being the most prominent ones, not to mention probably pain being um, an effect later on as well. Like if someone were to able to um, master pressure points and just, you know, do a targeted strike at someone's pressure points and cause them like a severe amount of pain, or if they were just to hit the pressure point, and if there was enough pain at that point, if it would actually kind of trigger the pressure point. I know they're called pressure points and need actual pressure, but if there's enough pain in that area, I don't really know much about anatomy if that would actually work, or... I don't know, it's just it's something interesting to think about. And these few things would definitely, if they incorporate it into the series, that would make it so that Aura would have its uses limited. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments, if there's other things that I've missed, which there probably are, but um, if there's other things that you think would get past an Aura Cloak, or other ways that would possibly deactivate a person's Aura Cloak, or if any of these would even play a role in the future, in the future volumes of Ruby that are coming out. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this little video, this little theory. Um, let me know what you think, and uh, make sure to subscribe if you liked it. I'll see you in the next one.